Hello, my name is John Griffiths and this is the sixth film in a series I'm making about um, originally starting with um, resources for preachers. But with this last film in the series, for now, um, I wanted to um, talk a little bit more about how else we could use these kinds of resources, how else we could use them. Now, earlier this week, um, there was a bit of a, a on, on my Facebook page, there was a bit of a, a rumpus going on because I had um, referred to a story from South Africa where um, someone had preached a sermon all about um, uh, whether Jesus had AIDS or not. My vicar got involved in the discussion, and someone else, um, uh, who I'd known for many years ago in Scotland, also got involved. So three of us having a discussion. And the number of people who, the total number of people who could have seen that discussion on Facebook, which I went and, and looked, was as many as 900. Now, if only a quarter of those people had seen that, and that would still have been 225 people. Now that is more than twice the number of people who would have been in a church on a Sunday morning. So what I want to talk about in this film is the potential we've got for reaching a much wider group of people than the group who choose to show up to church of a Sunday and to give some suggestions as to how we could do this. Now one of the great strengths about the kind of material that I've been talking about is that it's reusable. The slides that I showed you used in sermons, um, I've been able to use once, and apart from using them in this film, they'll never be used again. They'll be thrown away. Whereas these films, I hope, will go on being used for quite some time because people can use them to acquire the skills. They're reusable. They're not immediately discarded once that initial group of people have seen them once. And the other thing, of course, is there's lots of content on the Internet which we can borrow, which we can make use of, and again, this is much easier for us to get hold of. And again, we can discuss it, we can comment on it, and we can make it available to other people and, and draw their attention to it. So what I have for you now is a suggestion of four objects that you might want to, or, or activities you might want to consider using, which will, uh, which will uh, allow you to involve much wider groups of people. The first one is interviews. Now, in the last uh, film that I made, I showed you how to do interviews either using a flip camera like this or a mobile phone, any mobile phone to use uh, for uh, audio interviews. Now, imagine, for example, that someone had been through a bereavement and that they could be interviewed to camera or giving an audio interview a year later talking about the experience of having been through that. One could put that on, a, on Facebook or on a church website and use that as a way of simply discussing the issue and as a reference point for people to go who need help to, to help them in that situation. That's the first example. The second would be this. There are people who regularly read um, part, passages from the Bible within a church service. The people who have a gift for reading who could read uh, passages from the Bible or read a Bible story which, with the addition of, of pictures, um, possibly from uh, books, could become a kind of uh, resource, again, put on a, um, a church website or on Facebook for, again, uh, children to be able to uh, listen to stories or people who just want to learn, learn more about the Bible. A third example I give um, would be um, photo albums. If churches are involved in running local events that local other people are interested in, then why not start to collect albums of material together, just as local newspapers do this, to get the interest and involvement of people because the church is part and, and, and at the heart of their community as much of the time. So that's idea number three. Get yourself some albums together. The fourth example is Facebook itself, because it's possible to start a group on Facebook. Now, how would you do that? Well, all you have to do is to search for groups and then the opportunity of starting your own group. You can make that a closed group and only invite people to it who you want to come, or you can invite people and make it open so that anybody can visit. If you're doing that, there's lots of things you can do with it. You could use it as part of a preparation for a sermon. You could use it um, as a way of setting questions or asking people to do tasks to bring things to it, links or films, or uh, to upload things themselves that they think will be relevant to that particular debate. So, even with a Facebook group, it's not only a way of researching material before uh, we start to share it um, with people, possibly in a, in a sermon or something like that, but also it's a way of engaging people, a much wider group of people, than we've been able to do it before. And that really brings me on to the next uh, major topic, which is once you've got your objects, where do you place them so that people are going to see them? And at this point, we do have to start to talk about church websites. Now, church websites, seem, it seems to me, function mostly like notice boards. 
And if you found out how many or how few people actually used it and visited it, I think it would make us question a lot of the time why those things are there at all. Because they get used very little other than for people who are trying to find out a bit of basic information about the church. A simple way for you to check that is to set up a Google Analytics account. If you go into Google and sign up there, you um, can use a free set of tools, it's absolutely free, to see how many people use your church website. So you've got some idea as to, is it really worth the time I'm spending on it? But of course, if you put some of these things on there, and you put links together, or maybe you leafleted your, your uh, the houses around the parish, and you just dropped a postcard through the door, offering some of these different things as links for people to go and check it out, you might get some traffic to your website. So that might be something you want to consider doing. But I think it's um, also worth considering why we should possibly set up groups on Facebook as a way of naturally gathering people around websites so that they can become friends or, or, or link to a, 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 um, a particular page on Facebook, or we'd actually have a group which was linked to um, church activities. And the benefit of that is that it allows us to start to link to a much wider group of people. Two nights ago I was doing research um, on, um, about um, a an app for a mobile phone. And I had a group of uh, parents with young children, all of whom, when asked to say what their favourite app was, said Facebook. I was really quite surprised, because what it indicated was that, at least for this group of, of parents with relatively young children, all of them were using Facebook, not on their computers, but on their phones. And if you have an app for Facebook on your phone, it tells you whenever one of your friends sends you a message or posts something on your wall. So in other words, people are in continuous contact with their friends using Facebook. I can tell you that the UK population of Facebook is one million more than the entire population of Scandinavia. It's something like 24 million people. It's absolutely huge. So as a way of engaging with our parishes, why aren't we using Facebook as a natural way of connecting with people and giving them a way of being involved without necessarily having to come down on a Sunday morning? So I, I want to leave you with a, with a challenge, basically, to say if we're spending 90% of our time, if not more, preparing material to be used only once, for less than one in ten of the people who live in our parishes, then maybe we've got our priorities around all the wrong way. Maybe we should be thinking about how we use reusable material with our camcorders, our phones, our audio recorders, our cameras, which also take films, by the way, don't they? How could we use all of these in a way that we make objects which engage the people um, that, that live all around us and which they can participate in, they can answer back, they can interact, they can discuss with us. Because potentially, we could interact with many, many more people than choose to come down uh, on, on a Sunday to a service. So I'm simply giving that as a simple choice for us to conclude with, to ask what you're going to do about it. But thanks again for listening, if you're still listening with me at this stage, and um, keep thinking. And if you want to mail me and tell me what you're doing, please do that. That's it for now.